it was an explosion more powerful than a nuclear bomb, causing a cloud of dust that went 39 kilometres into the sky, a huge tsunami that travelled halfway across the world, and a shockwave that travelled around the planet. And for people in Tonga, it was devastating. So if you put like two side-by-side -side photos before and after the explosion, you can see that before it was all green and like alive. And then it's just like, it looks almost barren now. Like there's also the, like the shock waves that went through the water um, set off a lot of like flash floods and like pretty much it was just a massive, massive explosion. Lena has family in Tonga, which is a small country here in the South Pacific Ocean. It's made up of 169 islands, which are divided into three main groups. Beivu, Hapai and Tonga Tapu. And it's home to around 100,000 people. But something else that's important to know about Tonga is that it sits on the Ring of Fire. And if you're in the Ring of Fire, you're in the most volcanically active part of the world. You see, this horseshoe shape marks the place where several tectonic plates meet. They're the jigsaw-like pieces that make up the Earth's crust. And when they slide into each other or pull apart, liquid hot rock, called magma, can rise towards the surface. When enough magma and enough pressure builds, you get one of these. Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapi was an underwater volcano. And when it erupted, it caused a tsunami, a powerful and destructive wave which caused damage in several countries. It also damaged the cable that connected Tonga to the internet, which meant it was days before people like Lena could talk to their loved ones. So at first we had no contact at all, but then one of my cousins who lives in New Zealand got through to one of my other cousins and we found out that like my immediate family is all good, like everyone is okay. Now, Tongans are using satellite phones to connect to people. And while the reception isn't perfect, we're getting more information on what things are like. Pretty much everything got covered in ash, so like a lot of the land is just sludge and like mud really now because of the flooding as well. Um, and so it's still like a really, really big clean up. A lot of homes were destroyed. A lot of like villages and little islands were, have been evacuated. Um, so people have lost their homes, they've lost like pretty much everything physical that they have. Now, people around the world are trying to help. Anything that may be required that Tonga seeks from us in terms of assistance, we are ready to provide as required. We will continue, uh, particularly through the support of the men and women of the Australian Defence Force, to help Tonga get back on its feet. Australia sent a ship with supplies like clean water and food and people to help fix the communication cable. But it's tricky because Tonga is one of the few countries that's still COVID free and the government wants to keep it that way. So they're being really strict about who can come into the country. So it'll be up to the Tongan people to do the rebuilding while others do what they can. I say that we're all thinking of you and we're all sending so much love over to you all and that we're, we're trying to help, like we want to help you guys.